Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be summing an infinite series with factorials. We have 1 over 2 factorial plus 2 over 3 factorial plus 3 over 4 factorial and so on and so forth, all the way up to and including infinity. Anyways, you get the idea. This is an infinite sum that we're trying to evaluate. And notice that the numbers in the denominators are factorials and there is a difference of one between the numerator and the denominator if you just ignore the factorial symbol. Make sense? So we have 2 divided by 2 plus 1 factorial and then 3 divided by 3 plus 1 factorial which is 4 factorial so on and so forth. Now to be able to simplify this expression we're going to consider the general term. I'm also going to show you something from Wolfram Alpha, which is actually pretty interesting. So wait till the end to see what's going on with Wolfram Alpha. All right, so to be able to simplify this expression or evaluate it in the infinite case, I'm gonna consider the general term. What is the general term? Well, looks like, at least that's what I meant, it is n divided by n plus one factorial, right? And n goes from one to infinity. Notice that for n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, you got the first, second, and third terms. And this should continue forever, right? So this general term is important because if we can simplify it, then the rest should be fairly easy. So one of the ways you can look at this problem because of the factorial is take the general term in other words, like consider the sequence and then factor the n plus 1 factorial because we can write it as n plus 1 times n factorial, right? But when, when we write it that way, n is going to cancel out. The problem is if you write a factorial here and stop, then they're not going to cancel out. So we do need an n in the denominator. For that reason, we could go ahead and expand it one more time and finish at n minus 1 factorial, which will allow us to simplify n. So in the general case, we get something like this. Hmm, that's interesting. How do we simplify that? Does that telescope? How do we simplify this sum, right? That doesn't look very good to me because if you think about it, for n equals 1, it's going to look like this. 1 over 2 times 1 factorial. Well, actually, I should probably say 0 factorial, not 1 factorial. And then for the second term, n equals 2, it's going to be 3 times 1 factorial, and then 4 times 2 factorial, so on and so forth. Is that helpful at all? Not really. So this method does not work well for this problem. If we had n plus 1 divided by n factorial, we probably could use it. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Anyways. This doesn't work at this in this case. We're going to do something different. And that something is the following. We're going to go ahead and make the numerator look like the denominator. Like this. Add 1 and subtract 1. Now, this gives us something really nice because we can split it up. Okay? Like this and like that. Awesome. Let's go ahead and erase this area so we can do the right thing. Because this is the wrong thing. Okay? Awesome. Now, oops. So we're going to go ahead and split it up into two pieces. n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial minus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Nice. And obviously, we can now expand n plus 1 factorial. Write it as n plus 1 times n factorial. And this one is 1 over n plus 1 factorial. n plus 1 cancels out when we end up with the difference, which is nice because this is going to be now a telescoping sum. What does that mean? I'll show you what it is. So if you go ahead and do this n equals 1 to infinity, what are we getting from here? There's actually a couple different ways to look at it. One of them being you just expand it for 1, n equals 1. 1 over 1 factorial 
minus 1 over 2 factorial. And then you get 1 over 2 factorial minus 1 over 3 factorial. And then you get 1 over 3 factorial minus 1 over 4 factorial, so on and so forth. So it looks like a lot of terms are going to cancel out, like these two, those two, and those two. But what happens at the infinity? We don't know. Nobody knows because nobody has been there, right? So do we end up with this or are there more terms? So that's a question. To get a better understanding, we could probably separate these into two pieces like this and like that. So from here, if n is 1, you're going to get 1 over 1 factorial, 1 over 2 factorial, dot, dot, dot. And the next thing is going to start with 1 over 2 factorial and dot, dot, dot. Notice that everything starting with 1 over 2 factorial are going to be the same as the second term. They're all going to cancel out, leaving us with 1. Can we have said that easily here? Uh, probably because everything is going to cancel out and we're going to end up with 1 at the end. Well, could we not make a common denominator here? Like write this as n plus 1 factorial minus n factorial divided by n factorial times n plus 1 factorial and proceed that way? Probably not because it's not going to work. You could also do this numerically like, okay, we have 1 over 2 factorial plus 2 over 3 factorial plus 3 over 4 factorial dot dot dot. And now we can go ahead and split the 1 or write it as 2 minus 1 over 2 factorial, 3 minus 1 over 3 factorial, 4 minus 1 over 4 factorial, and so on and so forth. From here, we're going to get 2 over 2 factorial, which is 1 over 1 factorial, and then 1 over 2 factorial, and then 1 over 2 factorial, minus 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 3 factorial, minus 1 over 4 factorial, so on and so forth. So you get the same idea everything cancels out, leaving us with 1. So this infinite sum evaluates to 1, which is a finite sum. That means it converges. How do we know? Because it's a telescoping sum. Everything except for 1 cancel out. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the result from Wolfram Alpha and discuss why that's happening. All right, cool. Wolfram Alpha... Um, I was a little surprised when I saw that. Tada! Gave us this interesting sum. I'm like, what? Are you serious? Where does this come from? I thought about it for a minute and I kind of made a common denominator. Notice that you get negative 22 plus 2n. So in other words, this gives us n equals 1 to infinity of 2n minus 7 divided by n minus 11. Now, this might look very surprising and very, very different from what we found. But if you think about it, for n equals 1, we get negative 5 over negative 10, which is 1 half. For n equals 2, we get negative 3 over negative 9, which is 1 third. And then for n equals 3, we get negative 1 over negative 8, which is 1 over 8, so on and so forth. Now, if you look at our sum, it was 1 over 2 factorial plus 2 over 3 factorial plus 3 over 4 factorial, and so on and so forth. This is 1 half. If you simplify, this is 2 over 6 or 1 third, and this is 3 over 24 or 1 eighth. You see, it is the same one. So the problem with large language models like, uh, I was going to say ChatGPT, but large language models like Wolfram Alpha is that it tries to predict the general term, but it's not always accurate. Sometimes you can't even predict it, but anyways, you get the idea. Wolfram Alpha, too bad, you got it wrong this time. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.